right, so today I want to talk about how to build a collapsible header, and I'll show you what I mean by that. I'm sure you've been to web pages where as you scroll, the size of the header, the navigation, and whatever they've got up inside the header changes and shrinks and goes away. So here, as I shrink, as I scroll this up and down, the header changes to no longer take up as much space on the page. So it's actually quite a simple thing to do, and I'll show you how to do it and then show you how to improve the performance a little bit. What I've got happening here on the side is how far I've scrolled on the page. So as I move up and down, those numbers are happening. And I'm using the scroll event on the window object to do this. So you can see how often this event is actually being triggered. All right, so jumping into the page itself, in the HTML, it's quite simple. I've got a header element and a main element. Inside the header, this is the content that we're going to grow and shrink. Main element, that's the rest of the page. What we're going to do is we're going to take the header and make it position fixed. So it's going to stay stuck on the top of the page, right at the very top. And it's going to stay there, regardless of whether we scroll up or down. Then I'm using, you can use anything you want for the layout inside the header. I used uh, display flex, and so I aligned the H1 and the nav evenly, and then inside the nav I had the, my three anchor items lined up horizontally. But all I'm going to do is, when the person scrolls up, I'm going to add a class to the body. So if we look at the page right now, you can see it's large. I'm going to add a class like this. So we'll say class up. Now it's got the smaller version. So all I have to do is add and remove that class and then add a transition so it actually will animate between the two states. So with a transition, adding the class, that's all we have to do. In my CSS, if we just quickly look to see what I've got here, so there's the header element and it has a minimum height on it. I'm going to change that and I've got a transition set here. I've set it to all just in case there was other things I wanted to animate. I could change this and just say the only thing I'm changing is the height. The header H1, so that's the element that's inside there, also has a transition. It's the same one and I'm going to be changing the padding and the font size. I've got line height set to 1, which will make it the same as the font size, so above and below the font there's going to be the padding, and that's all that I'm changing is the padding and the font size. And then for the anchor tags themselves, same thing, font size, padding, that's what I'm going to be transitioning. When we add the class up to the body element, we're targeting these three things and we're just changing what the min height is going to be. We're changing what the font size is going to be. We're changing what the uh, padding. And this could be height if we wanted. We could hard code a height on here and up in here. It's going to do the same thing for us. Using min height just allows us to have some spillover so it can expand if it needs to expand. If the content for some reason got larger. So there we are. We've got this running. Now for the JavaScript, in my script tag here, I'm waiting for the DOM content loaded event to happen. When that happens, I'm adding a listener to the window object for the scroll event. The scroll event is going to call my function rollup. Inside here, this is where I'm writing out all of those individual values for how far I've scrolled up or down the page. If it's a value of more than 60. That means I've scrolled the page up 60 pixels. Then I'm going to add the class up. If it's less than that, I'm going to remove the class up. And that's it. That's all I have to do. Because the CSS has the transition, it's doing all the work for me. All I have to do is keep listening for what the current value is for that height of the scroll. Now, in terms of performance, one thing that we can do is using debounce. So I've got a debounce function here. All this is doing is it's going to return another function which will be used when the scroll event fires. It's going to be calling this function that is returned. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to say debounce is what I want to run immediately. So by adding the parentheses on the end here, this debounce function runs as the page is loaded. So when DOM content loaded fires, this function is going to run at that point. We're passing in the rollup function to here, and then 
it is going to be used inside of the function that gets returned. There it is. This is the rollup function right here that is being returned. And we're adding values in here for the delay. What it's going to do is this function gets passed in, gets bundled together with this set timeout, and every time scroll tries to call this function, it's going to check and see, hey, do I already have a timer running? If I do, I'm going to ignore this certain call, this particular call. If I don't, I'm going to create a timeout. I'm going to wait for 100 milliseconds before I actually run this. So the first time it's called, it checks for timer. Timer doesn't exist, so it's not going to clear the timer. It's going to create a set timeout with our debounce, or with our rollup function rather, waiting for 100 milliseconds. If it gets called again, say 10 milliseconds later, it's going to check and say, hey, do you have a timer? You do? Okay, well, I'm going to delete the old one that I set and create a brand new one, which is going to wait 100 milliseconds. So that way, if I fire this scroll event 100 times in the first 100 milliseconds, it's only the very last one that's going to trigger this function. So there's going to be a delay built in where it's not actually calling this thing and trying to add and remove classes. So you can see now the number of times that the scroll event's happening. It will fire. If somebody scrolls quickly, not a big deal. It's still going to work. The last time that it was called, 1300 pixels down the page, but it was only 100 milliseconds that took place. If I go really, really slowly, there we go. I finally reached that 60 pixel point, and that's what triggered it. Very, very slowly, and then very, very slowly back down. When I get past that 60 pixel point, that's when it will expand. And that's it. That's all you need to do to create a collapsing header. So this code right here will be in a code just linked to down in the description. You can have your own copy. You can play around with that. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. If you found it useful, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching.